Welcome back to Physics Junction. In today's video, let me talk about plasma and mediated surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy. Let's have a brief discussion on scattering of light. On striking an obstacle like dust, gas molecules or water vapor, the path of the light rays get deviated. Deviation of light rays from its straight line path is called the scattering of light. Light scattering by molecules are either elastic scattering or inelastic scattering. Elastic scattering is known as the Rayleigh scattering and inelastic scattering is known as the Raman scattering. In elastic or Rayleigh scattering, the photons energy and the state of the molecules are unchanged even after the scattering events. Thus, the scattered light does not contain much information on the structure of molecular states. In inelastic or Raman scattering, the frequency of the monochromatic light changes upon interaction with the vibrated states. Thus, the Raman spectroscopy have developed as an analytical method to probe structural details of complex molecular structure. Let's start with the introduction. So we all know about Raman spectra. Raman spectra is a powerful tool for studying properties of matter starting from single molecules to bulk solids. And Raman spectra can be used as a fingerprint of a molecule which is extremely important for single molecule deduction. However, Raman signal is very weak and to find its expediency in sensing applications, Raman signal need to be enhanced in many orders. Surface plasma resonance is one of the techniques which support plasma mediated Raman enhancement up to 10 to the power of 8 times. So that is LSPR or it is localized surface plasma resonance. Next, let's get into the topic surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy. When an analyte or molecule is adsorbed onto or near a metallic surface like gold or silver, the proximity greatly enhances the Raman emission of the adsorbed molecule, which is called a surface enhanced Raman scattering. And this technique is a non-destructive technique which combines modern laser spectroscopy with the exciting optical properties of the nanometallic structures. The surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy is more helpful in detection of chemical identity of the molecule as well the structural information of the molecules via amplifying the weak Raman signal together with the ultra sensitive detection limits. Next, let's move on to localized surface plasma resonance, that is LSPR. When surface plasmas are confined to a nanometallic surface, there exists a strong field enhancement in the vicinity of the surface, which strongly depends on the polarization of the excitation laser light, that is called LSPR, localized surface plasma resonance. And this LSPR is responsible for the electromagnetic field enhancement that leads to surface enhanced Raman scattering. The field enhancement is originated from the localization of the light at the surface of the nanoparticles and this localized field enhancement in a very small spatial region of plasmonic nanoparticle is called the hot spot and this is called first generation hot spots. When two nanoparticles are taken, hot spots are often identified as the nano gaps between nanoparticles. And here the local electromagnetic field enhancement is taken place in the nano gaps. This is called second generation hot spots. The local field enhancement in the gap is extremely intense because of the strong electromagnetic coupling. The mutual excitation from the metal nanoparticle system via enhanced induced dipole results in greater Roman polarizability of the adsorbed molecule. Thus the presence of the nanometallic structure nearby the analyte or the molecule modifies the efficiency with which the molecule radiates Roman power. And this is called enhancement of Raman scattering with the plasmonic system. Surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy enhancement is based on two effects. One is chemical effect and another one is electromagnetic effect. Here let's see the electromagnetic effect for SERS enhancement. Let's consider a dimer and the analyte. The analyte is placed between the nanoparticles that is in the gap that is nano gap the incident light excites the plasmonic system consequently the plasmonic system re-excites the dipole of the molecule and the oscillating dipole 
emits the radiation and thus the photon emission is due to dipole radiation of transition taken place from the excited state to the ground state. When the dipole moment is parallel to the axis of the dimer, there is a huge enhancement of the electromagnetic field in the gap. But when the dipole moment is perpendicular to the axis of the dimer, there is no field enhancement in the gap. Here each particle feels the effect of the electric field plus the polarizing effect of the charges induced in the nearby nanoparticle. So based on electromagnetic effect, the SERS enhancement can be explained as follows. That is the Raman scattering involves an exchange of energy between photons and molecular vibration and this process has been enhanced by the concentrated electromagnetic fields near the nanometallic surface due to the presence of surface plasmids. Thus, it makes the possibility to detect the low concentrations without the need for fluorescent labeling. So we can say under the influence of the electromagnetic field or the electromagnetic enhancement holds two distinct contributions that is the excitation of induced dipole and the emission of a Raman dipole. In general, a transition between energy levels of the molecular system takes place with the emission or absorption of a photon. Thus, the induced dipole excites the localized surface plasma and polaritons at the nanometallic uh, surface and these localized surface plasma and polaritons squeezes the electromagnetic energy from the incident light into the deep sub wavelength space of surface plasma and polariton mode. And this is known as the enhancement of the excitation rate. Here it is represented with the letter gamma that is gamma excitation at P. So that is known as the excitation rate with the plasmonic system and gamma excitation at V. So that is excitation rate in vacuum. The ratio of these two gives the enhancement of the excitation rate. That is the number of observed incoming photons which in results generate new Stokes photons. Next let's see Raman emission rate enhancement. Usually emission happens due to the transition of the electron from the excited state to the ground state. Let's take tau as emission time. That is nothing but time needed for electron to go down from excited state to the ground state. Therefore, the emission rate gamma equal to 1 over tau. And the ratio of the emission rate in the presence of the nanoparticles to the emission rate in vacuum is defined by the ratio of emitted power with the plasmonic system to the power emitted in vacuum. If larger the power, then higher the emission rate with the molecule. First, let's find Raman emission rate in vacuum. The Raman emission rate in vacuum is represented with the gamma r, comma v. So that is equal to excitation rate at vacuum times eta v, where eta v is known as the quantum yield. It's the ratio of the radiative part over the intrinsic and non-radiative losses. But in vacuum, the non-radiative losses is 0. So make this term as 0 in the eta v expression and substitute the eta v in the Raman emission rate in vacuum equation. And this is the equation we got after the substitution of eta v. The second one is the Raman emission rate with the presence of the nanometallic structure. That is the presence of metal nanoparticle for example. So here the Raman emission rate is taken as gamma r at p. So that is equal to excitation rate with the plasmonic system times eta p. Where eta p is known as the quantum efficiency with the plasmonic system. And it is a ratio of the radiative uh, part over the intrinsic and non-radiative losses. And the first term is known as the radiative emission rate and this term is known as the non-radiative emission rate and gamma int is known as intrinsic losses and substitute all the values in this um, second equation. So the Raman emission rate with the presence of the metal nanoparticle equal to excitation at a plasmonic times the eta p. So here the emission rate is obtained by both considering radiative and non-radiative emissions. So far we derived Raman emission rate at vacuum and Raman emission rate with the plasmonic system. The ratio of these two gives the Raman enhancement factor. After substituting all the terms in the QR expression, 
we observed that intrinsic losses for Roman emission rate are much larger than the radiative part. This is the expression we got after the substitution. So we can understand only enhancement of radiation emission and no more quantum yield, that is no quenching. Therefore, the SRS enhancement factor can be defined as an excitation of local field enhancement times a radiation field enhancement and this term is represented with um, Fe that is a field enhancement at excitation frequency and this term is field enhancement at Stokes frequency. So Fe is field enhancement factor that is at excitation frequency and Fe square Vs is at Stokes frequency. Here we derive the expression for average enhancement factor that is average enhancement factor QR equal to Fe square at excitation frequency and Fe square at Stokes frequency. When the excitation frequency is equal to Stokes frequency, this QR equal to Fe to the power 4 times excitation frequency. So we can say the field enhancement factor in the order of 10 to the power 4 that is the average SCR intensities from coupled plasmonic nanostructures is equal to 4 orders of magnitude. Here I have listed the references. If you have any questions please let me know. I hope this video is uh, more helpful to you all guys. Thanks for watching.